Awesome. Praise God. Hallelujah. God bless you, brethren. Praise the Lord Jesus died and rose again for you and I, for us and now for our families. You know, who is own self? <laughs> who is own self? And, and how sin, you know, that was our sin. He died for us. You know, he bare our sins on the tree that we've been dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed, healed, rescued, set free and delivered for us and for our family today. Um, uh, and it has been a time for me this morning just to reflect on my family, you know, where I had come from too. And just remembering, this is what I was saying, the seed of Abraham, our father Abraham, and the blessings that we've been blessed with, you know, and these are uh, multiple um, readings with regards to um, how our, our daddy, our father God had blessed Abraham and all of his seed and you and I today. Um, but the Lord had, uh, with our fellowship during the week, sister and I have been uh, communicating and having conversations and um, just lifting us, this woman here on high. I'll just quickly um, uh, go to a portion that I know is familiar to all of us. Um, sort of yeah, the, the Holy Spirit had me just quickly go to this one here. And uh, it's in the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 28. We've ministered it before, praise God. Um, and this is uh, the topic, theme, and subject is about you and I. It's about woman and faith and woman ministry. Who we are in Christ and how we've got some beautiful examples in the word of God. Um, uh, examples that were made like you and I with a, you know, as female is female praise god so I'll, I'll just quickly take the reading from uh 20 27 in the book of luke chapter one to a virgin and spouse to a man whose name was joseph of the house of can you hear me i mean of the house of david and the virgin's name was mary and she was the nazarene and verse 28 says, and the angel came and unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favoured. Beautiful, eh? And the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, among women. So when we um, follow through with our topic, team and subject this morning that the Lord had placed on my heart, I'm thanking the Holy Spirit that he'll lead and guide me. And he'll guide us to help it when he, the spirit of truth, has come. He will guide, he will guide us into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show us things to come. I truly am blessed um, with this portion here. And I'm reminded continuously when we, you know, who we hail to, we hail to our King Jesus. Our King Jesus. And the word of the Lord has taught me that we are highly favored. And that through the Lord, we are blessed among women. So all women are blessed. Praise God. Hallelujah. So that's our, there you go. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's our first portion. <laughs> I thought it was another one, but it's not. Praise God. Praise God, because faith cometh by hearing the, um, you know, the, our, our previous uh, ministry, part one, two, and three, has been teaching us on faith brings miracles. And one of those uh, beautiful gems that had been uh, spoken to over those uh, previous weekends have been Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So this morning we are blessed because we will only be hearing the word of God this morning. So that why? So that the spirit and truth and spirit and truth, you and I can grow up with the spirit and the word, we can grow up as, as what? As mighty women who are highly favored and who are blessed so that you and I, when we are among women, any man, woman, and child, praise God, but in particular, those who, are, who have the makeup of you and I, those who have bore children, those who have and who are able to um, uh, uh, understand the, you know, what's functional within a home, to keep a home, praise God, and to have those conversations, then we can um, uh, encourage them by way of the word of God. Then the Lord, the word of the Lord. See, the word that's written here for you and I today, as we communicate that word to our hearts, the word is written for the born again. It's for those who are in the word. 
not for those who are out, not for those who are without Christ. So therefore, the Lord gave you and I uh, a, a teaching through the Holy Spirit, a teaching to the Holy Spirit that when we grow up, we are able to teach also to those um, how to receive Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Um, I just want to I'm encourage at the moment to go to Mark. Some of the portions in here are going to be quite, uh, well, it's the truth. Eh? Jesus is the way, the truth, and life, John 46. See, no man cometh unto the Father, or come, come unto the knowledge of the truth, except through him, through Jesus Christ. Praise God. So when we, um, uh, let's have a look at page 1402. Some of the pages I've got, I do have some notes here. All written in my Bible, of course. Um, it was, and we, we will go there later. It was a hardness of the heart toward woman. And the Lord helped us and continues to help you and I through this time so that um, we know who we are in Christ. Uh, can we look at the 10th chapter of the book of Mark? I'm going to do the reading from verse 5. Page 1402, Sister Lorna. You can, you can go back over that, the, um, the previous readings just to get some, some understanding. I'll thank the Lord to, um, uh, and the Holy Spirit to give us spiritual eyes to see, spiritual ears to hear, and a spiritual heart to receive and graft the word of God, which is able to build us up and to give us an inheritance among all of them, which is sanctified. Verse 5 says, Jesus speaking to you and I. Um, he answered and said unto, unto me, for the hardness, or unto, you know, for our eyes of understanding, for the hardness of your heart, <coughs> he wrote you this precept, verse 6, but from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. See, so we are acknowledged, male and female. Now, Jesus talking to you and I. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they twain or two shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God had joined together, let not man put asunder. Now this here is with regards to a marriage, and that's an everlasting covenant. The Lord says, my covenant will I not break, neither alter the things that have gone out of my lips. Um, that's a portion in um, 1834. Oh, let me check. We can't be true. No, it's not 1834. We will come. We will find that. Praise God. But, but the word of the Lord says, my covenant will I not break. Now, this covenant here is with regards to a husband and a wife. Praise God. Hallelujah. Here today. And then, and like with regards to our sister, our brothers have been resurrected into the kingdom of heaven. But the Jesus and our brother are still with her. So they've got an eternal relationship. Their fellowship there is one that, you know, what God had joined together, let no man put asunder. It's eternal life. See, John 3.16 is said, For God so loved our brethren, brother and sister, that he gave his only begotten son to them both, that whosoever believeth in him, and they do, should not perish, but have everlasting life. See, now all we need to do is just believe God. We believe our daddy. Believe what? The word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So I believe God. I believe the word of God. And I believe the word to be true. Praise God. But in here, it was saying, for the hardness of your heart, he wrote to you this precept. Let's have a look at this hardness. Now, Apostle Paul, mighty man of God, also prior to, was a persecutor. You know, he persecuted the churches. Um, so what I want to do is just uh, quickly take us to a reading or a couple of readings of, of how he thought or what he thought a woman and their place that they have had or didn't have uh, within the church. 
So the reading is from First Corinthians, page one six one one. I've got one marker in here. And it was his, of his. <laughs> I was gonna, yeah. This is where our um, Apostle Paul was at at this time here, and he wrote to the churches and he would encourage them that. I'm going to just read from verse 34 of um, chapter 14, page 1611. It says here, let your woman keep silence in the churches. Well, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience as also saith the law. Wow. You know, so... For, for you and I, um, where you and I are at today, brethren, uh, the law was given unto Moses. Grace and truth came through our Lord Jesus Christ. But the church of Corinth were very, um, they became obedient. They became obedient, you know, for fear of, hey, can we just go over, I'll keep reading um, from 35. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands, at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. What? Came the word of God out from you? Or came it unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Wherefore, brethren, covered to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues, let all things be done decently and in order. Now, God gave you an eye in, in order. That's why we do live, brethren, by grace. Grace and truth came through the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There is an order for us, and that order there is, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Also, knowing, however, that in Mark, thank you, Holy Spirit, um, Mark uh, chapter 12, reading from verse 29. Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, or hear, O woman, speaking to us, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Now, there's a portion in the word of God here whereby both of these commandments, hang on the one. Uh, let me find that. These two commandments, hang on, you know, because there are multiple commandments. Can we have a look at that? So, so we got that portion there. Yeah, We'll come back to that though. I was just wanted, wanting to establish a matter of, of understanding who we are in Christ and why it is, why it is we can hear some very strong uh, uh, comments coming from even the born again, coming from some, from some partners and uh, pastors and their point of view. So when we, we go through and we read and understand, see, that's why Jesus came and gave us a better covenant, the covenant of the New Testament, because in here is the life force and all of the answers for you and I today. I'm going to go back to that. I will pick up the, um, uh, the portion whereby these, you know, all the commandments hang on these, these laws here. And I'm talking about with regards to the commandments in, is it a Matthew? Matthew 22. Oh, praise God. That's it. So write it down for yourselves, brethren. Amen. Matthew 22, 44. Praise God. Hey, hello. 40. 40. 40. Forgive me. Thank you, sis. Yeah. 36. Um, hallelujah. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 15, brethren. I'll keep reading from... Um, I'm going to read in 15. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have, been, have believed in vain. 
For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Hallelujah for you and I. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto the present, but some are fallen asleep. <laughs> Verse 7, after that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. Right? This it says, at last of all, he was seen of me also as the one born out of due time. See, now this was his conversation, Peter, oh, Peter sorry, forgive me, Apostle Paul, in his time, not in our time. And if we read this here, he acknowledges all those that saw him when he rose again. But you and I, oh, the word of the Lord will tell us who saw him first. The truth will, who he came to first, who Jesus came to first, praise God. Now, this Verse 9 says, for I am the least of the apostles that are not meant to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Jesus loves us just the way we are, brethren. You know, when we're, with, the, with the matter that we came before in our situation and our lives, as did Paul, God still saw his heart and had a purpose for his life. Verse 10 says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. In his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Now, <coughs> to God, you and I, in all that we do, we do it unto our Father and we give him honor, praise and glory. We give that to him. See, it's not of ourselves that we are able to do what we do. Hey, brethren, it's not. We are nothing without him. We are nothing without the Lord. We are able to do what we do because seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. All these things shall be added unto us. What are those things? The gifts, the talents, the tongue of the learned, the, the preaching that we preach because God's got a purpose on our lives for you and I today. There's a portion that um, he's, he's taught you and I that his grace was sufficient for him. It's Sister Lorna, you know that portion well. Now, in there, grace and peace came from our Father God, Amen. Oh. And it came from our Lord Jesus Christ. So you and I live under the ministry of grace. Praise God. But you was like, oh, woman, be silent. Be silent in the church that there wasn't a place for us. I mean, yet the, the glory to God, the Lord has set us free from sin, bondage, and death because the law was given unto Moses. Grace and truth came through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's have a look at another witness here, uh, page 1661, and um, it's in the book of Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2. Um, I'm going to... Yeah, I'll read from verse 1. I exhort thee, therefore, again, this is an Apostle Paul writing to, the, to Timothy now, you know. This is like, you know, how our sister, praise the Lord for the Jesus and our sister Sharon. I love our sister because she, she takes her time, you know, and I give glory to God because she is able to encourage us and to build us up by way of the word of God. And she writes these letters, you know, she writes and records um, the revelation of God's word. And she um, is able to, you know, by the Holy Spirit, lead and guide you and I as well. And this here, this letter is um, uh, to Timothy. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, the supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. And this is for you and I, when we read the word of God, it's for each and every one of us. This Bible here was written by our daddy. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. When our daddy wrote this Bible here, basic instructions before leaving earth, and he may have chosen authors within this, 
this word was adopted and written for you and I today because we have the spirit of adoption within you and I. We have been sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Hallelujah. So here, uh, supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks, he made for all men, you and I today as well. For kings, beautiful lady, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. I just want to um, just quickly go to another portion here. Hold my fingers there. Um, uh, just quickly, thank you, Jesus. Luke 7, chapter 25. But what went ye out for to see a man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they which are gorgeously apparelled and live delicately are in king's courts. It's a beautiful gem for us, Peter. Luke 7, 25. Praise God. I'll continue the read. That's from um, 2 Timothy 2.2. Verse 3 says, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Saviour, who will have all men, that you and I, man, woman, and child, all men, able ministers of the New Testament, those who the Lord has chosen, you know, according to the purposes he's put onto our heart, praise God, and the vision, um, have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. So we, this gift here of salvation was given to you and I today also, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man. That is the man, Christ Jesus, that you and I know. Jesus, to be Christ-like, to be a Christian, to know the things of Christ is to know the word of God. Because in here are the promises for you and I today. See, all things that have been uh, given to you and I today, John 1, 3, as, as the, as the, person, um, as the um, scriptures have taught us, for in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Uh, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made by our daddy. Praise God. So all things here were given unto you and I. Now there's one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus who gave himself himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Now, brethren, he was the perfect sacrifice, our Jesus. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, you and I have a relationship now back to our Father through Christ our Lord, John 14, 6. By his stripes, we heal. Amen. Now, that there was um, the persecution, Matthew. Matthew chapter 5 and the Beatitudes that you and I, again, we are familiar to the word that's been ministered this morning. And the Holy Spirit has um, uh, blessed us with the anointing also. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, here, the word teaches me in Matthew uh, Five verse, verse 11, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all men of evil against you falsely for my sake. Verse 12 says, rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. Praise God. So Jesus, when we go through... Um, a persecution may be, you know, somebody's like, oh, I don't want to hear about you, Jesus, and what has he done for me, and glory to God, and you know what they're going to say to you as well, brethren, this is what they're going to say, and I know our sister, um, you know, she gets this often, they say, how do you do it, Shane, you know, how do you continue to live this upright, righteous life, how do you continue to have favor with God, how is it that you are continue to be blessed, I get the same thing, Sister Lorna, I'm sure you do too. Just say glory to God. God is gracious toward me. You know, God loves me. You know, he gave his only begotten son for me. See, there's nothing that you and I could do that will be able to result in the blessing that our Father has done for us. 
See, neither is there salvation in any other. There's none other name under heaven. The, the word teaches me. Even among men whereby we must be saved. So therefore, those blessings there, when they do see that our conduct, mannerism, and our behavior, our speech, we give glory to God. Yeah. Yeah, so we come back and say, you know, with God, all things are possible. See, with man, it's impossible. The word teaches us the same. So we can just say, that's, that's that seed. That seed that we're giving to them. God is gracious. God is good. My niece, Mitra, she always says, oh, I'm getting it now. She's obviously used to somebody saying, oh, she says, God is good. And I'm supposed to say all the time. And then she says, and, all, and then I say all the time, God is good. See, that's not a familiar language to me, but I'm getting used to that. I'm getting used to how her, her language is. But see, the word taught me that Jesus, the word that I know, see, my voice, hear me. And I follow them. So that's what I minister. I minister the word of God because that is truth. So what truth teaches me in the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 28, says that I am highly favored and blessed among women. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm blessed here that when we, we do speak um, the oracles or the, the blessings of the word of God or the with the tongue of the learn that life is in the power of our tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof and that you and I live uh, our, our fruits the fruits that we live with and the blessings that we live with are according to our faith are according to our relationship with Christ and with the, uh, the intimacy of conversation that we have with our Father God. See, we, you and I, brethren, we believe God. Hey, he's our daddy. We don't have to find him to believe in him because we received him. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God. See, so we've already received who? Jesus Christ. We already received the greatest gift of all. So we no longer have to believe in him or believe in the word uh, or believe in God. We just believe God to perform these miracles for you and I. Praise God. Yeah. So when we, when we do that, we just say, oh, daddy, you know, like how we talk. I say, hey, sis, you know, hey, sister Lorna, you know, we have these conversations and we, we are able to talk these conversations through. But the, there's only one God and one mediator between God and man. That is the man Christ Jesus. There is only one Father. Our daddy is perfect. He's perfect. That's why he gave up his only begotten son. That whoso believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Couldn't touch sin. See, he's pure, our Father. So the relationship that you and I have with him is one so much that he does not want us to be persecuted. We don't need to be persecuted. Our Jesus was the ransom. He paid that perfect price for you and I. What our Father wants is for you and I to know who we are, who we are in Christ, and how to access or to decree or to claim or declare or to prophesy, to prophesy or to speak the things that we ought to speak so that he can perform it. He can command the holy angels. You know what, brethren? Praise the Lord for the holy angels. The word teaches me, bless the Lord, ye is the angel that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. The holy angels can do what our Father commands them to do. And then they've got to stand at ease. They've got to stand at attention. They... When they, because they're part of the heavenly host, they have to stand at attention. And then they wait for the next commandment. And then they, they go again. So they, they, they're working, working. They're doing the work. They're performing the word of God. Bless the Lord, Jesus angels. You know, when we pray the Lord um, to send his holy angels to encamp us around them, you know, around our family, they fear them and deliver them. That'll be the up in their hands. We start that's put against stone. So from that attention, they're standing at ease, and from that attention, they quickly go again. So they've got a job to do, the holy angels. Yet you and I, brethren, we can just turn up and say, hey, daddy. God bless you, dad. Father, I'm thanking you, Lord, for this. Okay, then. 
We can sit at the feet of Jesus. We can sit with the brethren. We can communicate with him. We're not having to stand at attention and wait. Why? Because let's have a look at Luke chapter 4, brethren. Praise the Lord for the Holy Spirit. Good Lord to us. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. Why? Because we've got the anointing, brethren. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you and I today. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed. We're, we're, we're being, you know, brethren, we, we are anointed with the word of God. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the poor. To heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance, preach, brethren, preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Hallelujah. We are blessed because we have been given the anointing from our Father. That's why we have that relationship with him. We have a door. Jesus is the door that no man can enter into except through receiving him first and foremost. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man so that shall he also reap. You know, if there are those that are out there saying, oh, I've got a one-way ticket to heaven. They haven't received Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Get them saved. Get them saved. Don't let them think or be deceived. Let them be deceived. See, the thief cannot get the anointing. He's out of the kingdom. He had a time in due time, that time there, where he was chosen. So he knows he was given the responsibility in heaven to be as the archangel. So he knows the word of God. He knows the blessings that can come from God, the power of it and the authority of it. But he has not got the anointing. You and I have. Those of us who, John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, then see Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Believe on who? Jesus Christ. Because I believe God. So what did God do for me? He says, believe on my son. He says, they believed on him. If you continue my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you'll know the truth and the truth shall make you free. That if, that if, belongs to a place that's not of God. It's doubt, doubt or separation. Her being separated from the fellowship of God, of the word of God. Now, those of us who continue in the word of God, the spirit of the Lord's upon us. He's anointed us to preach the gospel to the poor. You know, we can just turn up in the kingdom of heaven. I, I read the, the portions in the word of God gets me excited. In my father's house are many mansions. A mansion to me is something that is amazingly huge, bigger than big, that has furniture that I'd never be able to, um, you know, associate or like to on this earth here uh, because I would imagine that furniture to do, just be the most um, uh, prestigious among all brands, you know, in its color and its comfort and its everything. And so in, in our father's mansions, you and I, brethren, we can, we can go there and sit with them at any time. We can choose whatever, whatever setting we want to with our daddy and have a conversation with him. If we want to lie down with him, you know, if we want to, because we're his children, he says, for God so loves me. The word of the Lord says to me, Romans 5, verse 8, but God commended his love toward me. That when I, when I was without him, when I was without Christ, he still loved me. While you were sinners, Christ died for me. What a beautiful daddy that is. And now that we're in the kingdom, we are able to go and come and go. Find pasture whenever we want. We don't stand at ease, at ease like the holy angels and praise the Lord for the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord that it was expedient for Jesus to go away that he might be able to give us the gift, which is the Holy Spirit. Why? Because John chapter 14, 26 teaches me he's a comforter. This is his role. This is what he's going to do. I'll just quickly turn to the John chapter 14, verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, 
whom the pharmacy are dead, 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 dead. Yeah, yeah. My daughter needs some help, right? Yeah, Holy Ghost, go there. Which the Father will send in my name. Whose name? Jesus Christ's name. What's he going to do? He's going to teach me. He'll teach me all things and bring all things whatsoever I have said unto you. I say, thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy, for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that you'll neither leave me nor forsake me, that you'll not leave me comfortless. Thank you, Daddy. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, so, so it's beautiful to know that even then, see, the hardness of heart of those who are seeing the word, they've heard that word and they've heard that message and it suits them. The word says, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed or discipline and you'll know the truth and the truth shall make you free. What is the truth? Well, the truth is that God does not want women to be silenced in churches does not woman to uh, to go home and to to look for a male counterpart to be taught that only males can teach the word of God. Hallelujah. See that silencing there. How that ministers to me, brethren, is to silence the flesh. Amen. Women here is to silence the flesh. So that we ought to give the more earnest things to those that we have heard that will set us free. You know, so so um, if 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 as an example, there's there's been a blessing that we have received in the past and we haven't picked that up, it's going to slip. So we ought to give them more earnest things to that. And then this otherwise this woman here or this mother here will come back and be a wife and come back and be a mother instead of being that mighty woman of God. Yeah. That mighty woman of God, that person, you know, who God has chosen for you and I today. Can we all go to Genesis chapter 1? Back to the creation. If we have a look here, there certainly was a part or a purpose for the male. There definitely was a purpose for the male. However, uh, in John, uh, Genesis, sorry. Yeah. You created a male and female. It, it's dear, praise God. I'm just looking at this, these portions here and how, you know, John 1 1, uh, Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was Jesus. There was light. Now, you and I, we praise the Lord. See, the, the scriptures have taught us that um, in Psalms 119 verse 105, that thy word, the light, the word, Jesus, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Praise God. And the word of God is important for you and I so that we'd not be taken away by every wind of doctrine that we hear, that we can come back and read the truth, what the truth, what the word is saying to you and I today. Praise God. Now, when, when I read this, um, Verse 26 now, over page, page two. God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish. So um, over the fish and of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So verse 27 God created man in his own image. Beautiful name. In the image of God created him, male and female created he them. Now let's just let's let's think about this just for a moment. God created man in his own image. You know, when I so I look at our, our sister Sharon and I see God. 
See, that's what I see. Because God created man, created her in his own image. And I acknowledge also the God, our God and Sister Lorna, because God created you, Sister Lorna, in his image. See, what a beautiful image we are. And it gives us an appreciation of who we are as well. See, that tabernacle has now become more real because God is within me. Jesus is within me. See, so within us, we have, and who we are today, we are the image of God. Oh, it's a, no, it's a wonder when people see us, they're like, wow, you're glowing, you know? And they say, you know, I just want to know, I can't leave you. I don't want to leave, you know, that's what they, you know they, and it's not that. It's God. They don't want to leave the anointing of the glory of God. Praise God. Eh? See, when somebody comes to you, brethren, they're coming. Why? Because Jesus is lifted up from the earth. And all men are drawn to them. All women are drawn to them. It's not because of who you and I and what our gifts and talents and what we're doing. It's got nothing to do with that. Everything to do with the glory of God, the light that shines within you and I, which is Jesus. See, and everything that you and I touch, which is what the word has said, we will be highly favored. That's why we're blessed, brethren. Our children are blessed. The things that we speak come to pass. Why? Because we're created in the image of God. Male and female. Now I know from the scripture here, my mum and dad were created in the image of God. I know now the mum and dad that I know with their photos, they've been going through some photos this morning, and I had a revelation that I'll see them in that image. I'll see them in that image, the image that God had blessed them to me here, as I am here in his image, I'll see them in that image when I resurrect also to the kingdom of heaven. See, I always knew I'd see my mummy and daddy again. I always knew that I'd see them in the spirit, you know. I always knew that I'd they'd come and visit and be with me to take me home. I knew that. But I didn't know myself that I would see them in the image that I know them as. I know that now that's what I'm holding on to. See, I thought that they would come to me like in this, uh, this, you know, obscure spirit look that's sort of white, and, you know. I thought, I thought that. And then I thought that I would just spiritually sense that, okay, that's going to be my mum and that's going to be my dad. And so I, I thought that that was what I was going to see. This is my thoughts. My thoughts. See, and my thoughts are not God's thoughts. And as we continue in the word of God, he allows us even to have the mind of Christ to see what he wants me to see. See, that's why the, the portion in uh, Matthew 6, our Father chart in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. So praise the Lord. Well, that was a bit better, bigger than what I saw that portion, but anyhow, it says that <laughs> the image of God created he, him, male and female created he, them. But this is what happened to he, them. God blessed them. See, immediately they were blessed. God blessed them. God said unto them, be fruitful, not unfruitful, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moves upon the earth. So I still see that for me now here today, my life in Christ. God has given me, me, this person here, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. So he's given the anointed me, this female here, to be able to have, to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, which is what we're doing, our seed. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. I've said before you, life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea. Praise God. 
over the fowl of the air. Hallelujah. Over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. God says, verse 29, beautiful portion. God said, behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth. And every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you, it shall be for meat. Genesis 1, 29. To you, it shall be for meat. See, the kingdom of God, oh, praise the Lord for the kingdom of God, is not meat nor drink, but righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Romans 14, 17. Amen. Strong meat belong to those who are of full age. The word teaches us in Hebrews 5, 14. Yeah. 13, 14. Never read it there. Strong meat. But there is meat, brethren. Now, if you had a seed, we ain't going to get full. It has yuck. It's little. If I say to our, um, you know, to my mokopuna, here, well, here, my darling, here's a beautiful apple. I'll cut it up for you. You can have the seed. Is she going to get the seed and she'll look at me and say, Manny, what? You want me to eat the seed? You can't get full from a seed. It don't even taste nice. However, that seed needs to be planted. It needs to be watered and it needs to grow. The seed, the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we water the seed, which is where we minister the word of God. We, we meditate the word of God. We profess, confess. We speak the word of God. We prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. We evangelize. We teach the word of God to ourselves. And it'll grow. It'll grow. And in the image of God, we will be able to be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. Praise God. Now, I'm just going to take us to, um, let's have a look at verse 20. <clears throat> it's a beautiful reading, but let's go into uh, chapter 2. Oh, actually, I'll read from verse 9. No, from verse 7. Chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man. The Lord God formed man, page 3. He formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Now, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. I'm thankful that you and I have been, you know, given a beautiful gem that we know what that life is. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man on whom he had formed. And out of the garden made the Lord God to grow every tree and is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life. Tree of life, praise God. That's, that's Proverbs 18, 21 for you and I. Also the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. A lot of these scriptures that you're hearing today, brethren, are knowledge scriptures. Knowledge. So that we have an understanding. See, God's not a God of confusion. And he didn't give us the spirit of fear either. <laughs> but he gave, gave us the spirit of um. Uh, God is not given us spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So these words of knowledge are to be able to give us a sound understanding so that the Holy Spirit can lead us to uh, know who we are as women in the ministry by faith. See, we with the anointing of, the, of God's word. Praise God. Now, out of uh, the ground, yeah. Made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Verse 9, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river, a river went out of Eden to the water in the garden. From thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is, I'm going to skip that part here. We can do, do our own reading in our own time. Verse 15, here's man's purpose. And the Lord God took man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. To dress it and to keep it. I have to say, praise the Lord for my beautiful husband. 
because he takes wonderful care of me. He dresses me, he keeps the garden, takes care of it before I even open my eyes. What a beautiful husband. Thank you, Lord. Now, here we all have a, uh, have a role to do in this. This word is uh, spiritually, it's talking to you and I. The garden that, has, uh, that, that holds the gems that you and I have planted into, we have a responsibility to take care of that Eden, to dress it and to keep it. Take care of it. Hallelujah. Verse 16 says, And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, this commandment here was given to Adam, to man. To man. So man, you and I, man, Adam, has a responsibility to ensure that other men, Eve, the one that's coming, and our children, would also hear God's message. The same message. Verse 18, and the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him an help meet for him. Help meet. Mark that, underline that, make sure, break it, and make sure it is help meet. He's like, oh, I'm going to look in the toy box and see if I can find something for Adam to play with. He didn't say, oh, you know, there's a, I'm going to go here, or I'm going to go to the pit of hell, or I'm going to go to the, you know, the slave market or anything like that and find a help me for Adam. He didn't say that. He says, I will make him and help meet for him. So, therefore, number 19, and out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, brought them unto Adam to see what he would call the man. You know how beautiful it is. Everything that had been named or that was named then was named by Adam. See, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Yeah, a good name. When we choose a good name, I've been blessed to hear, you know, so when Sister Sharon chooses names for her mokos, she puts, the, you know, the anointing of the, the, the Holy Spirit and the word of God leads her to names. I'm like, oh, you know, oh, oh. but anyhow, we've got mokos coming along. <laughs> you know, there's, there are times where um, when, when the word ministers to you, take heed, brethren. A good name is rather to be chosen. Praise the Lord that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father. But when we bless our name, our children's names, when they come to us, I was like, okay, Ruth, that's a good name. Mighty woman of God. Praise God. Before that, I used to think, ooh, what a name. Okay. You know, and I was proud of my Maori name. Now I'm not. But I am now because of the word of God. See what I mean? See, women, men and women, without the word or truth, would speak oh, anyway, anything else. Anyhow, let's get back to this. Um, so Adam was given the wonderful task of being able to name every creature. How beautiful is that? To call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Oh my gosh, how simple is that? How simple is it that the Lord has given us the keys to the kingdom of heaven? All you have to do is say it. Because you believe God, right? I believe God. So he says, say it. Speak it. Speak it. Hallelujah. Verse 20 says, And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found. And help me. Help me. Apostle Paul, he was help me. Help me. And the Lord God caused sleep. Listen to this miracle. Verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman. And he brought her unto the man. Beautiful, eh? How beautiful is that? So I'm like, 
oh lord you know when you made me me did you take me from my husband's rib was that already your plan see that was the plan for i know the thoughts i think towards you said the lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end he said i knew thee before i put thee in the belly of the in the womb of your mom so i was like wow the lord i am the rib of my husband why do my children look like both him and i because they come from us right wow and who do we come from brethren glory to god we are made in the image of god so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them hey we're mums we've had children you've heard this gee your son looks like your darling your girls look just like you they have everything of you now the mokopuna your muko speaks just like you of course they do what are they speaking truth jesus is the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me praise god who are these women of god do you know what when the lord created us he didn't just take us from the rib of man he put everything within us within female a reproductive system a system that would produce another seed why because we are the seed of him the seed of the seed of the seed of the seed of god so he made female to be able to carry the child of god or who better than mary let's have a look at her matthew matthew matthew, matthew. mighty woman You know, I love the, uh, the word of God. It's been a, a good week uh, for me to have had a look at this portion. Um, it's still going over our faith scriptures as well. But the Lord truly, truly has, um, and that's what the word does, opens our eyes to be able to see what he wants us to see. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, let's have a look at Mary. Matthew chapter 1, verse, verse 21, I love. So her, Mary's the all-important uh, role in the word of God that we know or purpose um, being the mother or the child carrier, uh, the, you know, the bearer of the, the child of, of God, the mother of Jesus. She gave birth. She was chosen to give birth to the Savior of the world. Now, she was a virgin, as the word has taught us. And the, the angel Gabriel was sent to tell all this news to both Mary and also to Joseph. So I'm just going to, uh, verse 21 is what I love. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Did God choose men? No, he didn't. He made women specifically for their task to bear children. He chose Mary. There was a job also that he chose for Joseph. And he had to remember, Mary was a, a, a virgin. So they had not yet come together as a couple. And so the murmurings and the disputings and the conversation at that time would have been quite pers the persecutions would have been... Uh, you know, something for, for Joseph to have endured as well. Now, he could only endure that if he also was ministered uh, or given uh, a revelation or a truth. So verse 24 says, Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord. See, the, the angel of the Lord had bidden him to take to him his wife. So he had a role also. And he knew her, see, because he knew he was like, oh, I, I haven't done you know, my, my wife and I haven't come to be together. But he was 
um, spoken to by the angel of the Lord. See, and his role was to take care of her. And he did. And they journeyed through the land and uh, eventually came through unto uh, Bethlehem, as the reading has taught us. But here, this is a great woman, Mary. And Mary's job was to bring forth our Jesus. Now, verse uh, 23 says, Behold, a virgin shall be with a child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted as God with us. Praise God. So it is clear here that God chose Mary, or God chose a woman. Praise God. Um, I want to take us to another reading, if I can. So... Um, Page 1417. This is speaking of another woman. This one is speaking of Mary Magdalene and what her role was. So Mark chapter 16, verse 9, page 1417. Now, when, you know, I love these readings here because it, it, it allows us to be able to see what the Lord is saying to us. Now, Mary Magdalene of her time was uh, misunderstood. <laughs> However, she was a faithful follower of Jesus and uh, after being healed by him she continued with him and she traveled with him and she witnessed his crucifixion his burial and his resurrection so she was there um, but I'm just going to read verse 9 from verse 9 now when Jesus was risen uh, early in the first day early in the first day of the week he appeared first to Mary Magdalene out of whom he had cast seven devils. Now, when Apostle Paul, when we read in Apostle Paul that um, was speaking to the Church of Corinth, he didn't speak of any woman that Jesus had visited after the resurrection. He, 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 was, he didn't mention of them. Um, and when she, when she went and told them that um, he had, they had been with him as they mourned and wept, oh, and sorry, and she went and told that had been with him as they mourned and wept. I'm on verse 10, verse 11. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, they believed not. They didn't believe it. Now, verse 12. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. See, now, uh, who at that time, if, if you didn't know who Jesus was, you would not have been able to identify him. See, the word teaches me, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. They follow me. So we can hear the word of God, but... There were times where he appeared and he didn't, he came in another form. Jesus came in another form. They knew him not. Verse 14. Afterward he appeared unto the unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart. See, their heart was hard because they believed not them which had seen him after he was he was risen. They didn't they still see he came to them. He, to, to the disciples, verse 15 says, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe, in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands upon the sick, lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, 
he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord, working with them and confirming the word and signs following. So the Lord came to Mary Magdalene. She had seen him. When she went to take the news out that Jesus has resurrected, that he was alive, they believed him not. They believed him not. See, you and I, God uses us to get the message across. He uses women. Why? Because we'll take the time to, to look for him. We'll search the scriptures. Because we have also taken the time to hear the word of God. And it is the, you know, and, and to be a doer of the word. It is the doers that are blessed. He knows that he can trust women to take the message of his, his truth. His truth. He knows there's a portion also in um, 44, Luke 9, 44. Let these sayings sink down into your ears. He knows that we are there. For the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. This is what he's saying here. So he, you know, I see this. This, this is what women are like. You know, we're, we're going to take that information up. We say, okay, Lord, all right then. I can do that. I'll take that message. You know, I'll be able to, to um, share this, share this uh, truth, the gospel of truth. Praise God. Yeah. There are other women, mighty women of uh, of the Lord in here. One of them is Ruth. Let's go there. Ruth chapter 1, verse 16. There are multiple in the in the in the Bible, but just some that are familiar to us. Page 416. Let's find my portion. Now, <clears throat> the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 16. So Ruth was a Moabite, and she had, um, you know, Jesus is our example today. She, she, Ruth at that time was an example for her um for the people, you know, of that time. And uh, she had unwavering faith. Um, and she was a brave woman. Um, she had been widowed earlier in her life. And so she stayed uh, with her mother-in-law and followed God for all of her days um, and believing that he would be her provider. And verse 16 says, uh, and Ruth said, entreat me not to leave thee. See, so she's talking to her mom. Or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. And thy God, my God. What a beautiful woman, eh? What a beautiful example of this brave woman here, Ruth. You know, one who never... Um, and I think about, you know, for, for, my, for myself, the situation that I've come from go back to, to my old ways, because what is there, it, you know, it, it has, the way um, that, that my love was before Christ has nothing to offer me, nothing. So I know the God that Ruth speaks about today. You know, this is just saying, no, no, no. You know, I, I love this. She says, whether thou goest, I will go. Whether thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. You know, what a, what a beautiful um, woman to be able to stand up, make a stand, make a stand. And because of her, and because of her faith, the generations to come would be um, the, the line of the free woman. You know, those of us who, were, who have now have a relationship with Christ because our Jesus came from this lineage. One woman's faith. Praise the Lord. There's another woman in here that I, I only just had a look at. I remember Sister Sharon sharing her to me. And uh, it was the name of one of our sisters, um, Sister Deb. So the reading is in Judges. Uh, where is it? Judges 4, I think it is. Judges 4. And Deborah 
it was the um, being mentioned as being the only in that time there female judge uh, in, within the Bible. And um, Deborah is known for being a compassionate uh, leader. And um, of which there weren't many at that time, you know, there was a time where ugh, nobody wanted to listen to, to a woman. Um, but Judges 4.4 4, and Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of uh, Lepidos, she judged Israel at that time. So this is, you know, when I had an, this scripture here wasn't familiar to me, um, brethren. However, the name Deborah, it was in a conversation that just the night we are having. And I said, oh, is Deborah in the Bible? And she said, yes. Yeah. So I thought, well, I'm going to have a look at it. And then I, what I did learn was there is no other judge that was recorded in here, um, a, a female I'm speaking about, uh, except that of Deborah. And um, yeah, so at that time, Deborah was a, a mighty woman who uh, was a prophet and she judged Israel in her time. So we've got um, other wonderful, um, I, I guess for me, the most important for us is who knowing who we are. You know, that woman of God that the Lord had blessed, has blessed you and I with, brethren. Um, that's who, you know, I, 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 um, I know the, the woman in Christ that I am, that Lord has, the Lord has blessed me with and who I've become today as well. So I'm going to go through a couple of scriptures here, um, just, just to encourage you and I. The first one is, uh, of course, John chapter 14, verse 6. I received Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, and he is the way, the truth, and the life for me. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no man comes unto the Father but by me. So as a woman... You know, as somebody who is highly favored, as someone who is blessed, as a leader, and even as a judge, a righteous judge, as somebody who is uh, has been treated well by, um, you know, by our Father, Child, and Heaven, by God, and the fellowship, the Wheel of Life Fellowship I'm speaking with regards to, um, I would also uh, entreat others as well, um, like Ruth did. Um, as Mary did, you know, she carried um, the, the child or the Savior, our Savior, we too, I mean, who, childbirth is another, man, that's another topic, even subject just on its own, um, praise God. But we did, you know, God entrusted us to be able to carry them, nine months, take care of them, to nurture ourselves in order to nurture our babies. Um, so we were chosen to be able to do that job as well. John H verse 12 is another portion for, for us, brethren. Um, Jesus speaking to me, saying, I am the light of the world. He that believeth in me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And so we, Jesus being our, our example today is who you and I are uh, today as well as we continue in the word of God. Let's have a look at another portion, brethren, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. Oh. Very familiar to, to you and I. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. So if the Lord, which is and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Beautiful, eh? John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You know, another beautiful portion. Um, 1 Timothy 2, 7, God's not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound of mind. Uh, you know, that Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, we know we start our day with Jesus, we end our day with Jesus, but throughout the day, we're continuing in the word of God. John 8, 31, 32, therefore Jesus speaking to you and I today, continue in the word of God, and then you might decide for some death. The Lord wants us to be disciplined. So as a woman um, of faith in the ministry, be disciplined in the word of God. Let the word of God um, guide us. Praise God. Uh, John 11, 25, we know that portion also, that Jesus, for you and I today, and he has risen, he is alive, 25 and 26, Jesus speaking to her, is he speaking to her, who is he speaking to? Let's, let's have a little, little read of that, I'm going to go to that portion, I remember this now, uh, 11 page, 1497, can we turn there? Oh, 
Verse 20, I'll read from verse 20, 11, 20. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, beautiful woman, Martha, here we go, here's another one. Martha was the doer. <laughs> she was the worker. You get out there naturally and do things. Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him, went to meet him. But Mary, she was another doer. She was a doer of the word of God. She sat at the feet of Jesus. So you got one who's sitting there at the feet of Jesus. Well, she sat still in the house. She sat still, all right? Now, then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou has, has, has been here, this is with regards to the passing of their brother Lazarus. My brother had not died. Verse 22, but I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, see, mighty, mighty woman of God, God will give it thee. Beautiful lady. Jesus said unto her, okay, thy brother shall rise again. <laughs> That's faith. See, she knew that's a woman of God and faith. She, the power was given to her. So she usurped the authority. She said, okay, oh Lord, yeah. But I know that even thou, whatsoever thou would, would ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto you, thy brother shall rise again. 24, Martha saith unto him, I know that. <laughs> I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Now she was thinking, you know, that it is time. Now, listen to this. 25 and 26, Jesus saith unto her, remember this is for you and I today, brethren, knowing who we are too. But Jesus speaking reminded her, mm -mm, I am the resurrection. Yeah, I am the resurrection in my life. He that believeth in me, they we would, he would dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou of this? Beautiful lane. So here we have Martha and Mary, two beautiful sisters, wonderful women of God, women of faith. Thy faith is healed thee, you know. Thy faith is healed. There's another one there that are. Uh, oh, there's multiple, as you and I know. Let's have a look at another one. Who we are, brethren. Jeremiah 15, 16. Uh, page 1079. Beautiful portion, you know, just, just to um, encourage that... Um, that faithful woman who you are, knowing who you are, why God chose you. Now, verse 16 says, page 1079, 15, 16 of the book of Jeremiah, thy words were found and I did eat them. Thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name. I am called, Sister Lorna, Sister Sharon, Sister Ritu. I am called by thy name, O Lord, God of hosts. Praise God. Beautiful. We are called by his name. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Romans chapter 8, verse 37, 1583. Page Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We are more than conquerors. Deuteronomy 2813, page 321. Page 321. I am the head and not the tail, the word teaches me. So I'm turning to that portion so that I can read it. See, the Lord can trust us with his word. Praise the Lord for the stories, but the Lord can trust us with the truth, with his word. Amen. So verse 13 of the book of Deuteronomy 28, chapter, and the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. See, and the Lord trusts us to do that. We observe the word of God. You know, we take up the word of God, and we sow the word of God, and we speak the word of God, and the Holy Spirit guides us in our day. Now, well, you know, the, in the way that we should go. See, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the way the end of the ways of death and destruction. But for you and I, the Lord can trust us to reproduce the seed that He's given unto us to give birth to them, because He gave us the seed which is the Savior of the world. And and for that, Mary was faithful. The Lord can also trust you and I to deliver the truth as well. Hallelujah. Praise God. Psalms 46.10. Psalms 46.10, page 846. The word says, Know that 
I am God. Know that I am God. And so what the word encourages me there um, to uh, when uh, with those who commend us for the work that we're doing, when they when they come and they want to celebrate the things that the blessings, this here reminds me here, know that I am God. I just say I'll give glory to God. You know, I do what I do because of Jesus. Yeah, I am who I am because of Jesus in my heart. You know, He is gracious. I give glory to Him. So this this portion here is a beautiful uh, reminder uh, for me. There, I love that, um, and I'm encouraged also to know that we have we 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 don't speak of ourselves. Yeah, we don't speak of ourselves, but we speak of the word that's uh, in us. Hallelujah. Now there's a portion in. Yeah, there was that. So be still and know that I am God. <clears throat> and God saying, I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Yeah. See, that's humility. Eh? The Lord says, um, humble yourselves inside the Lord and show it to you. That where he exalted, uh, praise the Lord, it's written. There's a portion in there. We will find them. Actually, those are the things that we can search, we can add to, add to the gifts that the Lord has blessed us with. There's another one in um, page 86, is it? Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. Questions that we've all heard before. Sometimes we just need a little bit of a reminder. And uh, Jesus, um, you know, has guided us through the word. And this here is that the Lord is still reminding you and I that... Uh, he is, I am that I am, the word says there. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt thou say, uh, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am that uh, I am who sent me unto you. See, that's that again, that is remembering uh who what our daddy is doing for you and I. He he is, you know, he is um with God, all things are possible. Can we just quickly go to Hebrews 11, 6? Page 11, 6. Okay, page 1684. And it says here, but without faith, it is impossible to, impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And while we're here, let's acknowledge Sarah, verse 11. Sarah, also another mighty woman of God. <clears throat> verse 11 says, Through faith also Sarah herself received the strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Praise the Lord. So obviously in this time here, the word has taught us that both her and Abram, Abraham, they were past that time. They were old, stricken of age. And yet Sarah was able to conceive. Praise God, eh? And, you know, so we, we, we are blessed with all the uh, uh, spiritual blessings because of the seed of Abraham. Hallelujah. As well, you know. Um, wow. That's amazing. Yeah, so she's another mighty woman. Faithful woman. Faithful woman of God. Uh, John chapter 14. So John 14, 10 and 11. So that's, this is talking about our, our daddy. He's, he's telling us where he is in us. Chapter 10, page 150. Right? Yep, 1505. John 14. Oh, sorry, 14. That was a beautiful chapter too, I just come from. Yeah, page 1503. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not for myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me. Hallelujah. Hi, Daddy. How are you? God bless you. Thank you for being in me. 
please God. He doeth the works. Verse 11 says, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very works sake. <laughs> Praise God, eh? Hallelujah. You know, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, beautiful portions in here. Um, Jeremiah, he's going to have a look at Jeremiah, just 10055, because I've got, got it in my notes. He's talking about I'm not a child, I remember this now. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm going to read from five. Jeremiah 1 5, page 1055. Uh, I might as well, I'll start from four. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, speak, Jeremiah speaking. Verse five. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, then said I, our Lord, uh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go unto all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Verse 8, be not afraid of the men, of the male, of what the, you know, of the spoken. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. I am with thee to deliver thee. Verse 9, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold. I have put my words in thy mouth. Beautiful, eh? Yeah. I have put my words in thy mouth. That's the word. See, that's why the Lord can trust you and I to take up his word, speak it, to put it onto our heart, you know, to cleanse the mind here so that we're not conformed, be not conformed to this world, but be, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Praise God. Let's have a look at Hebrews 5.13. We can read that now. Hebrews 5.13 and 14. Take care of the Spirit. Hebrews. I was just here. Hebrews 5.13 and 14. He's got a page. My thing flipped out. Oh, 1.6. I've got it. Seven, seven. Hebrews chapter five. Yeah. Verse 13. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Verse 14, brethren. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Praise God. Spiritually be, be spiritually dis, you know, discern. For us, we unite today is to um, uh, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us that we might see who it is and that the word of the Lord that we've meditated on, he will touch our lips and he will communicate it you know, unto all good things. Um, so in order for us to do that, we'll need to, 1 Corinthians 13, put away. Uh, verse 13, I'm going to read from 11, uh, page 169, uh, that when we were a child, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a, uh, this is woman, man of the living God, son of God, you know, uh, who we are, mighty woman, faithful woman in the word of ministry, put away these childish things, put them away, you know, put them away. It's, it's about you and I now. Uh, can we go to Romans? Check out eight. Check out eight. Page one, five, eight. Uh, sorry, one, five, eight, eight, three. Uh, it's so that, and we know that all things were together for good 
to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose, Romans 8, Romans 8 28, um, that you and I have uh, got a purpose on this earth, praise God, and that so that we can become, uh, so that our daddy can use us, you know, a, a vessel of honour, um, that we might be able to minister, um, the, uh, be an able minister of the New Testament of life. Uh, so final, final portion. Uh, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs followed. Amen. Praise God. Mark 16, 20. God bless you. God bless you, brother. Mighty woman of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you too. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Oh, sister, close it.